Shabbat Shalom everyone. Welcome to another edition of our home worship video resource. G. Stephen Simons here. I am so glad you could join me for this video. Let me take a moment and tell you where the team and I are and what we're doing. We are currently in Glen Rose, Texas. Y'all willing, we will be entering into the final weeks of our preparation for our upcoming fourth leg of our returning to the ancient paths RV outreach tour, which y'all willing will begin just after Passover in a few weeks. And y'all willing, we will travel up the East Coast and through the deep South. So if you live in South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, or Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, or Louisiana, with a possible stop in Florida. If you live in any of those states and would like to be water immersed or attend a gathering, then I need to hear from you right away. Send me an email at info at triumphanttruth.global and we'll get right back to you. And if you include your phone number, someone from the ministry will give you a call and we could begin a conversation with you about a possible gathering in your area. Now, I wanna encourage you, don't delay on a few occasions, we've had people contact us after we've been to their state and have already departed. So I don't want you to miss out. Send us an email at info at triumphanttruth.global. Include your phone number and we will give you a call. All right, I wanna encourage all of you family members to be in prayer concerning the fourth leg of our Returning to the Ancient Paths RV Outreach Tour. We are so excited and we are looking forward to bearing much fruit. All right, it is time to blast our shofars. I hope you have your shofar. When we come back in the next segment, we will sound the alarm to Teshiva together. Hallelujah. Family, are you ready to quote the Shema? We quote the Shema every week because we believe that Yah, the Father, is the only true Elohim and we should love Yah, our Elohim, with all of our heart, with all of our being, and with all of our strength. We also believe that Yeshua is the prophet like Moshe and Yah placed His word in Yeshua's mouth and through belief upon Yeshua, that's a belief that is empowered for obedience, then we can enter into covenant with our Creator Elohim and we can live a life that is well-pleasing to Him through obedience to His Torah. We're going to place the verses right up on the screen. We'll begin with Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 4. First we'll say it in Hebrew and then in English. Let's say it together. Shema Israel, Ya Elhenu, Ya Echad. Hear, O Israel, Ya our Elohim, Ya is one. And you shall love Ya your Elohim with all your heart and with all your being and with all your might. And then we go to the second Shema found in Torah, which is Deuteronomy chapter 18, beginning with verse 18. Let's say it together. I shall raise up for them a prophet like you out of the midst of their brothers, and I shall put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him, and it shall be the man who does not listen to my words which he speaks in my name, I require it of him. And then we go to Ezekiel chapter 36, beginning with verse 25, let's say it together. And I shall sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean from all your filthiness, and from all your idols I cleanse you. And I shall give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. And I shall take the heart of stone out of your flesh 
and I shall give you a heart of flesh and put my spirit within you. And I shall cause you to walk in my laws and guard my right rulings and you shall do them. Hallelujah. It's time to pray toward the land of Israel, so I want to invite you to stand up and face in that direction. For me, it is this direction, and we're going to pray and intercede on behalf of the Jewish people of the land, and really everywhere in the world, for their safety and for their protection, for their well-being, and for their salvation. We're also going to be praying for the nations of the world, as well as for our gatherings today. Let's pray. Abba, we love you so much, and we are so blessed and so very thankful for this beautiful set-apart Shabbat day where we can gather together as your people by way of video and worship you as creator and redeemer. We are facing the land of Israel. We know your eyes are upon that land continually. Our hearts are with the land and with the people, and we are praying for their safety and for their protection. We're praying that you will be with the Jewish people, that you would give guidance and wisdom and understanding to those who are in leadership positions to know what to do at this time. We're praying for those who have lost loved ones, that you would be a great comfort to them. We're praying for the protection of the innocent ones, and we're also praying for the release of the hostages. We ask that you would be a great light in the midst of this horrible darkness and that your reign will come and your will will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. We're also praying that you would reveal yourself to the Jewish people, reveal your son Yeshua, that as they read through the scriptures they would see Yeshua and be convicted and call upon that one name by which we all must be saved, the name Yeshua, which means the salvation of Yah. And we're praying that many, many, many Jewish people in the land and all over the world will come to know Yeshua as Master and Mashiach of Israel. We're also praying for all of the citizens of the land as well. We're praying for the nations of the world. And we're asking you to move in a powerful way by your spirit in the nations as you gather up Ephraim from every nation under heaven. And we're asking you to anoint this ministry, anoint these videos, make them fruitful, make them productive. We pray that many people will push play and watch the videos and hear the messages and be convicted and call upon that one name by which we all must be saved, the name Yeshua, that would lead to a justification that produces true obedience to Torah and all of Scripture. We're also praying for our gatherings wherever we may be gathering worldwide, and we're asking you to move powerfully in our midst by your Spirit. We're asking you to lift the fallen, encourage the downcast. We're asking you to bless us as we worship you, to minister to us as we pray to you, to transform us as we study your Word, and we pray that we would be empowered to go forth with a bold witness of Yeshua into all our sphere of influence, proclaiming Yeshua and Teshuvah everywhere we go. And we pray that you would use us in a powerful way as we endeavor to expand through our efforts, empowered by you through your spirit, the reign of Elohim in our sphere of influence and worldwide. All of these things we ask in the powerful and wonderful name of your Son and our Master and Mashiach, Yeshua. Amen and Amen. As we prepare for worship, I want to share a wonderful passage of Scripture out of Luke chapter 17, beginning with verse 12. It says this, and as he was entering into a certain village, speaking of Yeshua, he was met by ten leprous men who stood at a distance. And they lifted up their voices, saying, Yeshua, Master, have compassion on us. 
And having seen them, he said to them, Go show yourselves to the priests. And it came to be that as they were going, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned, praising Elohim with a loud voice. He was praising the Father with a loud voice. And he fell down upon his face at his feet, speaking of Yeshua's feet, he humbled himself before Yeshua, giving thanks to him. So he was praising the Father with a loud voice, and he was giving thanks to Yeshua because Yeshua had been the agent through which this miracle of healing had come to this man. And he was a Shumarani. In other words, he was a Samaritan. And Yeshua answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Was no one found to return to give praise to Elohim, to give praise to the Father, except this foreigner, this Samaritan? And he said to him, Rise, go your way, your belief has made you well. And so I want to ask the question today, where are the nine? Where are those who have received blessings from the Father? Where are those who have been healed by the Father? Where are those who have received answered prayer? Where are those who have received good things from the Father? Have they returned to give praise to Elohim and to be thankful for Yeshua's sacrifice? I believe so. We are here today to praise our Father with a loud voice and to be thankful for the covenant that we have with the Father through Yeshua. Hallelujah!
falling down my beard Running down my garments Family, we are only a few short weeks away, y'all willing, to the launch of our fourth leg of our Returning to the Ancient Paths RV Outreach Tour. And the team and I have been in preparation mode. We've been doing all sorts of things, all kinds of work to get ready in the natural for our upcoming tour. I've been doing a lot of maintenance on my RV. I purchased new tires. I got the front end aligned. I got the roof sealed. I'm having the brakes checked out and there's a lot more still to do. But not only should we be doing the work in the natural, we also need to begin doing the work in the spirit. And I'm really encouraged by what Shaul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 11 where he said, you also helping together in prayer for us. And so that's the emphasis I wanna place on this prayer time today. I am calling the family to help us in prayer as we prepare in the spirit for our upcoming tour. There's a lot of things we need to pray about. We need to pray that many people will come to the gatherings. We need to pray that people's hearts will be sensitive to the word, to receive the transformational word and to submit to water immersion, to receive the circumcision of Messiah and the I want to obey heart and the power to be obedient. We need to pray that we are sensitive to follow the Father's lead as He leads us every step of the way. We need to pray for much fruit to be born in this ministry. And even though now we're doing the work in the natural, it is time to do the work in the Spirit. And there's a lot of things that we can do to defeat the evil one before his strategies are ever manifested in the natural if we will deal with them in the spirit. And so that's the emphasis. That's what I'm requesting today. I'm asking that the family rise up in prayer and help us to be victorious and successful in our upcoming Returning to the Ancient Past RV Outreach Tour. Y'all bless you as you pray. Your mercy, oh yeah, reaches to the heavens. Your faithfulness stretches to the skies. Your righteousness is like the highest mountain. Your just is like the great. The sons of man take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They're satisfied, feasting on the fullness in your house. You
want to encourage you in your giving and take you over to John chapter 21. And we'll pick up with verse 14. It says, This was now the third time Yeshua was manifested to his taught ones after he was raised from the dead. When therefore they had eaten breakfast, Yeshua said to Shimon Kephah, Shimon, son of Yonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, master, you know that I love you. He said to him, feed my lambs. He said to him again the second time, Shimon, son of Yonah, do you love me? He said to him, yes, master, you know that I love you. He said to him, shepherd my sheep. He said to him the third time, Shimon, son of Yonah, do you love me? Kepha was sad because he had said to him the third time, do you love me? He said to him, Master, you know all. You know that I love you. Yeshua said to him, feed my sheep. I find it interesting that Yeshua equates love for him with the feeding of the sheep. In this conversation with Shimon Kepha, he emphasized it three times. If you love me, you'll feed my lambs. If you love me, you'll shepherd my sheep. If you love me, you'll feed my sheep. And that's what Triumph in Truth Ministries is doing when we get out on the road most of the year and we go from place to place and from state to state. We have a passion for feeding the sheep, for reaching the sheep, for sharing the word with the sheep to empower the sheep through the word, water immersing the sheep, ministering to the sheep, connecting the sheep. And so we are loving Yeshua by serving the sheep. And those of you who are supporting this ministry with your tithe, if you don't have a local congregation that's doing the work, or with offerings, or with tithes and offerings, you are loving Yeshua by making it possible for this ministry to feed the sheep. By, by giving and supporting, you are keeping our vehicles going down the road. You are helping us with those expenditures that are necessary to be able to stay in a different state and travel. You are making it possible for us to minister to the sheep, to feed the sheep, to love the sheep, to connect the sheep, to share the word with the sheep, to empower the sheep. And we have water immersed scores of sheep. And so we're loving Yeshua by taking care of his sheep. When you give to support this ministry, you're also expressing your love for Yeshua and making it possible for us to feed the sheep. Again, Yeshua emphasized it three times in this one conversation with Shimon Kepha. So he places a great premium on feeding the sheep. It's very, very important to him that the sheep are fed. And when you give, you make it possible for the sheep to be fed from state to state across this country and worldwide. Y'all bless you in your giving. Well, are you ready to get into Yah's Word today? I am as well. I want to invite you to open your Bibles with me to Exodus chapter 19. We're going to begin with verse 1 in just a moment. And I've entitled this message today, New Covenant Giving of the Torah. Did you know that there is a giving of the Torah in the New Covenant? Does Elohim give His Torah to those who would believe upon His Son, Yeshua? The answer is yes. Many people don't know this Bible truth, and that's why there's so much confusion in religion. Some say the Torah has been abolished. Some say that Messiah is the end, as in the termination of the law for believers. Some say, I'm dead to the Torah. Well, when you begin to see these principles that are clearly in Scripture, that the new covenant is defined 
by the fact that Yah delivers his Torah into the minds and hearts of his people, those who would believe upon his son, then that would change your perspective on the Torah altogether. Let's get right into the verses. First, we're going to read about the original giving of the Torah on Mount Sinai, and then we're going to get into the new covenant giving of Torah. Chapter 19 of Exodus, verse 1. In the third new moon, after the children of Israel had come out of the land of Mitzrayim, on this day they came to the wilderness of Sinai. For they set out from Rephidim and had come to the wilderness of Sinai and camped in the wilderness. So Israel camped there before the mountain. And Moshe went up to Elohim, and Yah called to him from the mountain, saying, This is what you are to say to the house of Jacob and declare to the children of Israel. You have seen what I did to the Mitzrites and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. This sounds like a love story to me. And now if you diligently obey my voice and shall guard my covenant, then you shall be my treasured possession above all the peoples, for all the earth is mine. So this sounds very much like a proposal for marriage. And you shall be to me a reign of priests and a set-apart nation. Those are the words which you are to speak to the children of Israel. And so Moshe is the mediator between Elohim and the people. And Yah sends him with a message to the children of Israel. It's really a proposal for marriage. And notice their response. And Moshe came and called for the elders of the people and set before them all these words which Yah commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, All that Yah has spoken we shall do. So Moshe brought back the words of the people to Yah, and so they accepted the proposal for marriage. And Yah said to Moshe, See, I am coming to you in the thick cloud, so that the people hear when I speak with you and believe you forever. And Moshe reported the words of the people to Yah. And Yah said to Moshe, Go to the people and set them apart today and tomorrow, and they shall wash their garments and shall be prepared by the third day. For on the third day, Yah shall come down upon Mount Sinai before the eyes of all the people. And you shall make a border for the people all around, saying, Take heed to yourselves that you do not go up to the mountain or touch the border of it. Whoever touches the mountain shall certainly be put to death. Not a hand is to touch it, but he shall certainly be stoned or shot with an arrow, whether man or beast, he shall not live. When the yovel sounds long, or the shofar blast sounds long, let them come near the mountain. And Moshe came down from the mountain to the people, and set the people apart, and they washed their garments. And he said to the people, Be prepared by the third day. Do not come near a wife. And it came to be on the third day in the morning, that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud on the mountain, and a voice of a shofar was very strong, and all the people who were in the camp trembled. And Moshe brought the people out of the camp to meet with Elohim, and they stood at the foot of the mountain. And Mount Sinai was in smoke, all of it, because Yah descended upon it in fire, and its smoke went up like the smoke of a furnace, and all the mountain trembled exceedingly. And when a voice of the shofar sounded long and became very strong, Moshe spoke, and Elohim answered him by voice. And Yah came down upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mountain, and Yah called Moshe to the top of the mountain, and Moshe went up. And Yah said to Moshe, Go down and warn the people, lest they break through unto me, to see, and many of them fall. And let the priests who come near Yah set themselves apart too, lest Yah break out against them. 
And Moshe said to Yah, the people are not able to come up to Mount Sinai, for you warned us, saying, make a border around the mountain and set it apart. And Yah said to him, come, go down, and then come up, you and Aharon with you, but do not let the priests and the people break through to come up to Yah, lest he break out against them. And Moshe went down to the people and spoke to them. And Elohim spoke all these words, saying, I am Yah, your Elohim, who brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim, out of the house of slavery. You have no other mighty ones against my face. That is the first commandment. You do not make for yourselves a carved image or any likeness of that which is in the heavens above or which is in the earth beneath or which is in the waters under the earth. You do not bow down to them nor serve them for I, Yah, your Elohim, am a jealous ale visiting the crookedness of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing loving commitment to thousands, to those who love me and guard my commands. So that was the second command. Here's the third command. You do not bring the name of Yah, your Elohim, to naught, for Yah does not leave the one unpunished who brings his name to naught. Here's the fourth command. Remember the Sabbath day to set it apart. Six days you labor and shall do all your work but the seventh day is a Sabbath of Yah, your Elohim. You do not do any work, you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days Yah made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore Yah blessed the Sabbath day, and set it apart. And then we go on to the fifth commandment. Respect your father and your mother so that your days are prolonged upon the soil which Yah, your Elohim, is giving you. The sixth commandment, you do not murder. The seventh commandment, you do not commit adultery. The eighth commandment, you do not steal. The ninth commandment, you do not bear false witness against your neighbor. And the tenth commandment, you do not covet your neighbor's house. You do not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male servant, nor his female servant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, or whatever belongs to your neighbor. And all the people saw the thunders, the lightning flashes, the voice of the shafar, and the mountain smoking. And the people saw it, and they trembled, and stood at a distance, and said to Moshe, you speak with us, and we hear, but let not Elohim speak with us, lest we die. And Moshe said to the people, Do not fear, for Elohim has come to prove you, and in order that his fear be before you, so that you do not sin. So the people stood at a distance, but Moshe drew near the thick darkness where Elohim was. And so we see the covenant commandments being spoken to the children of Israel. In other words, the, the marital vows. A covenant is a marriage. And Yah always deals with people through covenant. And there are two parties in the covenant with a mediator. Yah always keeps his side of the covenant, that is to hear and answer our prayers and to fulfill his promises. And when he is dealing with the original covenant people, he gave them commandments that they were to obey. And if they have a belief that leads to obedience, then they will keep their side of the covenant and the covenant will prosper and they will prosper within the context of the covenant. So we see the, the beginnings of the giving of the Torah. It starts with the 10 words, and then Yah continues on and gives to Moshe other right rulings and judgments that he was to share with the people as well. 
Let's go over to Hebrews chapter 8. And we're going to read about the new covenant giving of the Torah. Hebrews chapter 8. starting with verse 6. It says this, But now he, speaking of Yeshua, has obtained a more excellent service inasmuch as he is also mediator of a better covenant, which was constituted on better promises. Now, you remember when I said that Moshe was the mediator of the covenant that Yah made with Israel on Mount Sinai. And Moshe points to Yeshua. So Yeshua is the mediator of a better covenant, the new covenant, which was constituted on better promises. The better promises of the new covenant are the promises that Yah has made to give his people, believers in his son Yeshua, the equipping, all that they need to be able to keep covenant with him. In other words, to love him the way he wants to be loved uh, through obedience. He's made some promises to us that he's going to do a work within us to enable us to do what the original covenant people failed at doing, and that is obeying the commandments. For if that first covenant, that first marriage arrangement, had been faultless, in other words, if they had kept the first marriage arrangement, then no place would have been sought for a second. It's because they broke the covenant that there was place to be had for a second covenant. For finding fault with them... He found fault with Israel. He didn't find fault with the Torah, as some in religion say. For finding fault with them, he says, See, the days are coming, says Yah, when I shall conclude with the house of Israel and with the house of Yehuda a renewed covenant, or a new covenant. It says, Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand, to lead them out of the land of Mitzrayim because they did not continue in my covenant and I disregarded them, says Yah. And so this new covenant is not going to be exactly like the original covenant. I understand why they say renewed covenant because the covenant is cut with the same people group and it has the same 10 words as the marital vows of the covenant. But there is something new about the new covenant. And so it's not like the original covenant in the sense that the father placed the responsibility of success in the covenant, living the covenant lifestyle on the people. In other words, he said, you put my words in your heart. You teach my words to your children. You talk about them when you rise up and when you lie down. And when you walk along the way, you write them upon your doorposts and upon your gates. You circumcise your heart to love me. The original covenant is defined by the phrase, and you shall, and you shall do these things. The new covenant is defined by the phrase, and I shall. The Father is promising to do something in believers in Yeshua to empower them to be able to do what the original covenant people failed at doing, and that is being obedient to the commandments. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Mitzrayim, because they did not continue in my covenant. In other words, they didn't obey my commandments. They didn't regard my Torah. And I disregarded them, says Yah. They broke the covenant, and I disregarded them. Because this is the covenant that I shall make with the house of Israel 
that's the whole house of Israel, the believing house of Israel, after those days, says Yah, giving my laws, here it is, this is the new covenant giving of Torah, giving my laws in their mind, and I shall write them on their hearts, and I shall be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. This is amazing. This is a new covenant giving of the Torah. So the Torah is not abolished. The Torah is not thrown in the dumpster. The Torah is not thrown on the ash heap. Instead, there is a giving of the Torah, very similar to the original giving of the Torah, in the sense that Yah is going to give his Torah to his people, and it says that he's going to place his laws in their mind. In other words, he's going to place the Torah in their minds so that they will think about how they could love him through obedience to the Torah. And he says, and I shall write them on their hearts. So now we're not talking about tablets of stone. We're talking about tablets of flesh. But Yah is going to take his finger like he did in the original covenant, and he's going to inscribe his tarot, his laws, upon the tablets of our hearts. And in the same way that there was a great powerful movement of Yah in the original covenant, in inscribing those words, the, the tarot of Yah upon those tablets of stone and all that went in to his giving the Torah, we have a powerful move of Yah by his spirit inscribing his Torah upon the tablets of our hearts. It's the second giving of Torah. It's the new covenant giving of Torah. And so the new covenant is defined by the fact that Yah is internalizing his Torah. It wasn't enough for Moshe to come down the mountain with the two tablets of stone in his hands. It's all external, saying, see, see these tablets, see these words, these laws, these commands. We need to do this. We need to obey this. It's all external. And they didn't obey it. So Yah doesn't want another failed marriage, so he's going to do something in the new covenant that is remarkable, that's miraculous, that's powerful. He's going to take his finger and he's going to write his Torah upon the tablets of our hearts. It's miraculous. It's powerful. We're going to have the Torah in our minds. We're going to be thinking about the Torah and how we can love Yah the way he wants to be loved. And we're going to have his commandments inscribed upon our hearts. The Torah in the new covenant is not going away from us. It's not being abolished. It's not being thrown in the dumpster. It's not moving away from us. It's coming closer to us. It's coming inside of us. Our hearts become the tablets upon which Yah inscribes with his own finger, his Torah. And our bodies then become like living arcs of the covenant. It's amazing. And so to capture that concept, Religion says the Torah has gone away. It's irrelevant. It's been abolished. But the scripture tells us, this is the book of Hebrews. The writer of the book of Hebrews is quoting Yirmeyahu. Yirmeyahu prophesied about the new covenant giving of the Torah long before 
Yeshua walked this earth and gave his life. It's remarkable. Let's continue. I shall write my tarot on their hearts and I shall be their Elohim and they shall be my people. Verse 11. And they shall by no means teach each one his neighbor and each one his brother saying, No, Yah, because they all shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them. Well, Yah is the teacher. Yah teaches us about himself. He uses his spirit. But he's the teacher. And so he places his Torah inside of us. And as we study and as we pray and as we meditate upon his word, then he teaches his Torah to us. He instructs us by his spirit because I shall forgive their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawlessnesses. I shall no longer remember. Sin is the transgression of the Torah. And so in the new covenant, there is a new covenant giving of Torah where Yah internalizes the Torah, brings it closer to us, takes his finger, inscribes his commandments upon the tablets of our heart. Our bodies become like the Ark of the Covenant. He teaches us what he's placed within us as we read, study, meditate, and pray. He forgives us all of our unrighteousness and our sins, and our lawlessnesses, he will remember no more. Hallelujah. Isn't that powerful? After watching this video, you may have been convicted in your heart, and you're asking yourself the question, what must I do to be saved? Well, the Bible tells us that there are some things that we must do to be saved, and so I want to give you seven things according to Scripture that we must be willing to do to walk the path to salvation. The first thing is we must believe with all of our hearts that Yeshua Messiah is the son of the living Elohim, that he died on the tree for our sins, that he was buried and raised from the dead. And then we must perform teshuvah. The word teshuvah is a Hebrew word that means to turn to the master in obedience. It's not just enough to say, I'm sorry for what I did in the past. I'm sorry for my sins. But instead, you leave behind your lifestyle of sin and you embrace the word of Yah and you have a willingness and a desire then to be obedient to the commandments. And then thirdly, you must submit yourself to water immersion. When you're immersed in water, the Bible says that you are buried with Yeshua Messiah and you are raised to walk in newness of life. The scripture says that old lifestyle of sin is cut away from your life. And it's the place where the circumcision of Messiah takes place. That's the circumcision of the heart. And you receive the want to heart. In other words, you want to obey. And then that leads us to number four. You also receive the power to be obedient. And how do you do that? You pray to be filled with the set-apart spirit of Yah. And so when you're filled with the spirit of Yah, or you're immersed in the spirit of Yah, not only are you given the power to be successful within the context of the covenant and to love Yah the way Yah wants to be loved through obedience, but you're also empowered you're given gifts of the Spirit. You're empowered by Yah to be useful for the reign of Elohim and to go out and to receive that harvest of humanity that Yeshua has charged all of his followers to go out and receive. And then we need to read our Bibles regularly and pray continually. The scripture says the word of Yah is like milk for a baby. And so if you're just coming to belief, it's like you're a little infant in your belief and you need to grow. How are you going to grow? You need to eat. 
And what do you eat? You eat the Word. It's like milk for a baby. So eat regularly in the Word and pray continually, the Scripture says. Isn't it wonderful that you have a relationship with the Father and now you can have an ongoing conversation with the Father? That's a beautiful thing. And then number six, you need to find a local fellowship that you can engage with. If you can't find a local fellowship, then get connected with a ministry that's blessing you and then stay connected. And then number seven, the scripture says, he who endures to the end shall be saved. What that tells us is that salvation is not just a moment. It's not just a prayer, but instead it's a life. And so you have to live this life of walking in the will of the Father, walking in His ways, following after Yeshua and His example of obedience, loving the Word, obeying the commandments, praying, and being filled with the Spirit of Yah, being led by the Spirit of Yah. And if you'll do that throughout your life, the Scripture says when you get to the end of your life, you will be saved. And so I want to encourage you, once you start, don't quit, don't give out, don't give in, don't back up. Continue in this walk, and if you'll do it and not stop, then at the end of your life or when Yeshua returns, you will be saved. And so I want to encourage you, if you are ready to make a commitment to these things, then why don't you send us an email at info at triumphandtruth.global, and we're going to respond right back to you, and we're going to celebrate with you the fact that you have believed upon Yeshua and you're ready to walk in Yeshua's example of obedience, walk in a lifestyle that pleases the Master, and we want to encourage you in it. And so send us an email. We want to celebrate with you. If you endure to the end, the Scripture says, you will be saved. Hallelujah. Another edition of our home worship video resource is about to come to an end and it has been such a blessing for me to be able to share this video with you this Shabbat. It is my hope and desire that you've been tremendously blessed and I want to encourage you to pass the blessing along to others by sharing this video with your family and friends. As we bring this video to a conclusion, I want to speak a word of blessing over you. So I want to encourage you to stand up where you are and just begin to worship as I speak these words of blessing over your life. Yah bless you and guard you. Yah make his face shine upon you and show favor to you. Yah lift up his face upon you and give you shalom. In Yeshua's name, amen and amen.